everyone. My name is Tori. Thank you for stopping by to watch this video if you're new here and if you're returning. Thank you for coming back to watch another week in my planner. Uh, this is me planning for the week of March the 13th through the 19th and because it's St. Patrick's Day week I wanted to do a rainbow theme so I grabbed some of this really cute washi with unicorns and rainbows on it because I thought it was really fun and it captures the spirit of the holiday for me. Um, and so I'm just laying that down and using my Shine Sticker Studio metal washi card that they released. Uh, I was supposed to go out for their winter advent, but they didn't get to it, so they released it, I want to say a little bit under a month ago. I'm not sure, quite sure. Um, but in this plan with me, I'm actually using my, I'm back to my Sarasa Dry um, in zero point, or excuse me, in 0 0.04 millimeter, just because I was using my Tombow Mono markers last week for writing, and I do like how dark they show up on the page, but also, I just, I don't know, I, I, I am very temperamental and wishy-washy about what I write with on a weekly basis, and I, I wish I could understand that part of me, but I think I just get restless, I'm not sure. So I, like I said, I did want to make this a rainbow week and um, my favorite color personally is blue. So I did do some of the accent colors on the sidebar in blue. And um, this is where I just keep track of my habits and my weekly highlights. And I actually did this kind of differently than I did last week. I ended up planning and then putting down all of my stickers and like deco. For some reason I don't I don't know what my brain was um, thinking but it worked out for me and I think I'll do that going forward just because it was easier to kind of put deco down once I had everything laid out but I'm trying to use up um, all of these sticker sheets from a shine sticker studio Michael's sticker book it's their sleepover sticker book um, and I have two of them so this is just the first one um, so these stickers will be around for a, probably a, a, a while on my channel just because anything with Shine Sticker Studio I adore so I grab as much as I can when I can. And so I'm using these functional boxes to mark off when I start work every day and I'm putting them in a radio, radio? No. <laughs> I'm putting them in a rainbow gradient and just chopping off the tail so that it fits within the Hobonichi weekly columns and I believe like somewhere around here I literally have my schedule right to the right of me on that very small white piece of paper and I still laid these boxes down wrong so I, I love that for me um, and I you'll see that I realized that a little later on I think but I'm just trying to use these functional boxes up and I use a lot of them as actually deco too and I'm just, like I said, I'm trying to get through the stickers that I have while I kind of hold back on buying more stickers and waiting for other orders to come in. I'm, I'm just trying to use up what I have. So I filled in the habits section on the sidebar along with the highlights, but funny enough, I forgot to actually write in <laughs> like the weekdays for the highlights and my habits, like draw in the habit tracker. I don't know why I forgot that, but it just didn't, I guess, appeal to me to continue with that section, or maybe I thought I was going to wait for that to dry, and just never came back to it. So that actually doesn't get filled out in this video, and I apologize for that, but it literally is just me tracking my medication, um, some grooming habits that I like to stay on top of, so just like brushing my hair, washing my face, things like that, um, uh, because like I said multiple times, on my channel, I do struggle with generalized anxiety disorder and depression, and one of the ways I struggle with that is like my presentation I don't think is always the greatest, so um, I just like to track on whether I'm actually caring about what I look like, uh, so that is one of my habits that I track, and then I also track my spending, and I try not to spend money on a given day, but that's not always how it works, so I then just went over to my weeks and drew out the arrows for all of my work shifts and this week is my late week at the library so if you're new here i am a librarian 
and I mainly do children's and teen programs, but we have a rotating um, system with our staff where one of us works late with another person um, until closing every week, and this is my week, and it's, it's really just like come in two hours later than you normally would and stay two hours later than you normally would. It's not anything intense, um, but whereas like our schedule has been moved to a four-day work week where you work 10 hours. Um, on the late weekdays, you work, I, I want to say like less hours a day. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but you're going to be working more days out of the week. So your hours are going to be a little bit less each day just so that you can work every day. So on your late week, you have to work your Friday and your Saturday um, instead of like the four-day work week where you just work Monday through Thursday. And the weekend going into your late week, you have the Monday off. So um, you'll see that Monday is something that I plan out first. And I've already grabbed the stickers there for that because I was actually planning this spread on Monday because I had the time. I wasn't doing anything. It was my day off. So um, that's kind of why you see me fill out Monday a lot first because I hate, I mean, I was living that day already. <laughs> um, but so it is nice to like go into your late week having that four-day weekend beforehand, right? Because normally you're working Monday through Thursday, you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then you have the Monday off before you start your late week. So it's really nice, and I really don't mind that part. So I just wrote out basically what I had been doing that day. I watched some YouTube videos, and I'm watching Sailor Moon, and y'all, I am on episode like 170 out of 200 of the original show. Um, I haven't even started like Sailor Moon Crystal or anything like that, but I can just taste the end. It's so near and I can't wait to get to the next um, show, but I'm just proud of myself that I stuck with it and I am slowly but surely getting through the Sailor Moon saga. So I'm really happy about that. I've been watching it for like two years now. Um, and I just, that was one of my goals was to get back into some of the anime I watched as a kid and like fully watch it and see what the storyline was about and all of that. But so here I'm just flipping back to my monthly to see what programs I have. And I use these dollar sign, um, stickers to put at the end of each of the box that I cut off because I really like using these functional boxes to mark off time, but they're longer than the width of the Hobonichi weeklies, um, days, I guess. And so I just cut them off with my little bunny rabbit exacto knife and I put an icon at the end of where I cut so that it's not completely obvious that I trimmed it because I never trim anything straight anyways. And so... I wrote down all of my work hours and I just put those money symbols to kind of give myself a little bit of motivation to actually want to go to work because while that four day weekend is really nice, um, when you have to get up to go to work the next day, you're just like, I could just lay here. So, um, I was just kind of noting all of the times that I didn't really, I wasn't like jumping for joy at going to work, um, you know, with like a little piggy bank or a money symbol just to remind myself that we go to work to get the money so that we can pay to live <laughs> um, and so it seems very straightforward but if just by using those little icons I pointed it out to myself and I didn't have that much of a hesitation to start the day when I looked at my weekly spread like I normally do so I marked my closing desk shifts with a piggy bank instead just to provide some variety but I always try and use a lot of a lot of those icons on that sticker sheet um, to just kind of get rid of them. Like I said, I'm working through it, and you'll see it in this coming up week too. That it pretty much will probably stay the same um, if I go with what I'm thinking about doing for this coming week. But I also marked off that I needed to take my trash out on Tuesday night because our trash day is Wednesday, and then Wednesday's the fifteenth, so. My um, truck payment is due, and then I'm just marking off when another program happens in the library that I'm not actually there for. Um, and I, I did notice that 
going back over this video, I am a sporadic planner. Like I don't, I don't plan, um, in a straight line. I plan the way my brain works, I guess. And that is very interesting to watch. And I, um, I, I don't know why I do, but I guess it's just, I, when I think about something, I want to write it down so I don't forget it immediately. And I think that's why I'm a bit of a circular planner or like a, a planner who's all over the place because I don't go day, like day by day and plan out my day. Um, and I find that when I do go throughout my week and I plan ahead, so this is like the most amount of planning ahead that I do really, I back plan a lot just because I actually did this on this Friday on this spread. I tried to plan ahead a little bit and it was like my brain immediately revolted against me and was like, okay, you told me what I have to do and now I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so it's like I have a little toddler inside my head who only wants to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. So I try not to really plan out too in detail because I won't do it. I'll just like ignore my own plans and then I'll feel bad and I'll feel like I just wasted that planning space when I could have used it for something I actually did instead of um, trying to plan ahead and then not following through because that's that's something I notice that I do <laughs> um, when I do try to plan ahead is like if it's something I especially don't want to be doing and I plan ahead to do it I'm not going to do it it's just it just is that way so back to me being a circular planner again I was back in Tuesday writing out some work tasks that I thought of as I was doing this um, because I was writing down that on Thursday we have our reading buddies program and while I'm not in the library for that program I still like to just remind myself that it's happening so while I was thinking about the reading buddies program I was thinking about the other programs I have and what I need to be doing on Tuesday and Wednesday to get prepared and writing out tasks for that and so I wrote down that I had um, some, I, it, well, I wrote down that I needed to get some plans done for the summer library programs because um, in public libraries, summer is actually the busiest time of the year for us because we're trying to pick up the reading slump that the public schools um, spend the rest of their school year trying to combat, right? So we're trying to provide literacy, um, awareness, and just basic um, programs that inspire kids to be interested in reading and what their library can provide for them during the summer. And for my library, it's, it's the most important part of the year. We receive the most statistics from, that, from those two months that we do summer programming. So I definitely have to plan it ahead multiple months ahead because it just needs to be smooth and going off without a hitch um, by the time it gets there so that's why I'm making plans for that in March <laughs> um, but you'll see here that I'm laying down some stickers and I skipped a lot of the sticker laying on this spread because I was using kind of those sticker flakes types of things and these stickers again are from AliExpress like they were from last week um because again I've had this AliExpress order for over two years and I'm just trying to use up what I ordered from that and I ordered a lot of different things so these were some of them and they're just cute little Kwai um characters and just the pastels and the, the rainbows and the little Pikachu and all those kinds of characters I found them really adorable so, of course, I pick them up and then I never use them because you don't want to waste them on something you're not going to use and, you know, find all what all kinds of justifications as to not use the pretty things we buy. But I am finally trying to let go of that demon in my brain. So I was trying to coordinate these stickers with the spreads as well. But this right here is a lot of the reason why I cut out a lot of the deco in the weekly spread because... Just peeling the backing off of those stickers was very monotonous. I was getting bored watching it. I wouldn't want anybody else to get bored watching that. So I just kind of, you know, chopped a big part of that out because it's it's literally just repetition of trying to peel the backs off of each of those stickers. And 
not that it's not that riveting I promise <laughs> um, but so in these markers I actually they were some purchases that I'd made probably at the beginning of my like stationary loving journey I guess um, that's a weird way to say that but <laughs> but um, essentially they were something I could try once I found out what brush markers were and they're just Recollections brand, um, off-brand, like, Tombow markers, essentially. And so I tried to keep the rainbow theme going throughout this week as well and using some of that washi that I used in the weekly to coordinate them and try to just make, again, some more deco choices with the functional boxes that aren't going to be able to be, like, they're those boxes at the top of the daily pages definitely will not fit in the weekly um, columns of the Hobonichi. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to use them and make them functional for me because these sticker books are not made for the Hobonichi. So I just want to make sure that um, I try to find the best way to apply them. And I also pulled out my jelly rolls because if you're <laughs> any knowledgeable about the 90s, you know that the Sakura jelly rolls were like tried and true uh, gel pens and they're so milky and I just tried to make them match with the spread and I love the way that the Hobonichi paper like the Tomoe River paper holds the Sakura jelly roll ink it's so pigmented and it just it, it just like sits on top of the page like it doesn't really get absorbed so that is kind of a pain when you want to flip the page and you'll see that I try to blot it with my pencil board. Um, but I just, I find the stark color to be very satisfying to look at. So I don't know what I drew there. Um, I was trying to, I think, go for like a cat or something and it turned into a type of griffin situation. I'm not sure for the orange page. So I am not an artist. I don't know what I was doing there, <laughs> um, but we just went with it. And I also wanted to note that the Sims 4 infant update is dropping on the 14th. And I've been playing The Sims since I was 8 years old. So this is a big deal for me because The Sims 4 specifically has been in it, like an iteration of The Sims that has not... Oh, I just... I'm going to talk about this for a minute. And I, I apologize but this basically the sims 4 has been a franchise that of all the iterations of the sims had the biggest potential in my brain but fell flat the hardest in my opinion um just because i can remember in 2014 when it dropped and the absolute um fanfare around it the way they hyped it up and built it up to be the answer to all of the sims flaws and um it just was like they're like the graphics are gonna be the show and I mean they didn't lie the graphics were the show and that was about it like there was no I guess like consideration for gameplay when the sims 4 specifically dropped I don't know it was like they just wanted to be on the front and cutting edge of um, graphics and simulation instead of caring about the people who actually play the game and so I know that The Sims 4 has soured for a lot of people because of that reason and it's been almost 20 years that it came out and it's just now getting a developed infant update and there's something to be said about that <laughs> um, so but in the middle of my rant about The Sims I did draw a little very tragic women and a women's lives on my yellow day and then for the green I just did a little vine but I just really like the way that the ink like I said sits on the Tamale River paper I think it looks so pretty and so pigmented and just it's a little chef's kiss moment right there for me so I love my Sakura jelly rolls and anytime I remember to take them out I'm never like I never regret using them so I really like them in this spread and it was just a little piece of joy for me but and then I also wanted to add that the actual growing together expansion pack for the sims 4 released on the 16th of this week and I didn't even buy it but you know just something to look forward to and I have been watching reviews 
and seeing if people think it's worth buying because another thing that really frustrates me about The Sims is that, or like EA, Electronic Arts in particular, is in their effort to try to be, um, I guess, accessible to all. It, it kind of bites you in the butt if you purchase an expansion pack as soon as it drops and they try to get you to purchase it by pre-ordering to get like specific perks and their perks their idea of perks are like the, like just for uh, for example um they were doing pre-orders for this expansion pack and it was like get an exclusive baby carrier um if you pre-order the pack and like a couple other items but so that was like the pre-order um excitement or whatever and then it's just it, it seems weird to me because like for the 20th anniversary they just dropped like a random hot tub it's just like the stuff that they try to get your interest with is not interesting at all in my opinion so I don't understand the thought process behind it and when I'm saying like it bites you in the butt, when you do buy the expansion packs up front, you're spending $40 and then like give it a year, it'll be on sale for 10. So it depreciates really fast in my opinion. And so I do like to know when the expansion packs come out, but I don't always pull the trigger immediately. And I do wait until they're on sale because I'm not like a streamer or anything. I don't have to have that expansion pack today. I can wait. And I will wait because odds are, like, I'm just going to waste my money if I buy it right now. And I hate that about EA because it didn't, I don't feel like it used to be like that um, back when you had to buy the CD-ROMs to put in your computer. But now that things have gone digital and there's just so much competition in the market, I think that's their answer to their competition. But I, I think for the, the people who have played Sims for so long, um, if anything, it's just more of a turnoff for us than anything. So... But let me catch back up to where I'm at. So I did finish a sticker sheet and I was really proud of that just with like getting all of these functional boxes down and using them as deco. And I end up using a lot of those checkoff um, box list, like those bullet pointed checkoff um, arrows as functional and deco stickers in this spread. Because like I said, again, the name of the game is get rid of the stickers and not in, a, not in a negative way, just use what you bought, use your stickers. <laughs> and so I know that I wouldn't use all of those checkoff boxes for what they were intended for. It's just not something I think to pick up and use when I'm making a list. Odds are I'm probably just going to write the list down. I'm not going to go reach for a sticker to tick off some things. So while I did put them on every single part of my dailies under my work and my personal and I try to use them everywhere, I did use them as deco as well because I'm just, I know the kind of planner I am and I'm not going to reach for those unless they're like right in front of me. And even then they're so long that it's not something I really see myself utilizing a lot, especially the foil ones. Um... I don't feel like the foil ones for me would be something I'd want to write on, you know? I, I feel like it's more of a deco situation for the foil ones. But So I'm just going back into the dailies and putting down all of those checkoff boxes that I can use and find. Um, and so I'm making sure that I've used every possible sticker I can use. I also just back in the dailies wanted to make sure that Again, it does coordinate with my week, and I put Saturdays are for the library on the Saturday, and Happy St. Patrick's Day on St. Patrick's Day, um, just to kind of remind myself that that is a holiday that's happening, and then Saturdays are for the library was, you know, kind of a mental nod to me that you are working at the library on Saturday. And then, just to close out the dailies, I wanted to remind myself again that I do have some bills due on these days, and so I wrote out what bills are due. I have my credit card, um, I think my power, my water, and my Wi-Fi are usually due in the middle of the month as well as my truck payment. So I go in and put those down and just use some more icons that I was using in the weekly spread to make sure that it's catching my eye. I'm seeing it. I don't forget about it um, because some of them are auto withdrawals but a lot of them are not and so I have to make sure that I go in and 
pay within the apps. And then the same for Wednesday. I have to make sure to go in and pay within the app because um, they're not auto withdrawal for that one either. So I'm just looking through my stickers, seeing if I can use anything else to put on these pages. And lo and behold, I find one more thing that I can remind myself to do, which is again, to empty the garbage on Tuesday night. <laughs> And I'm just trying to find any kind of icon to use to use up these stickers. So that is kind of like how the day went. And I just, again, fill out like what I need to do on that Monday. But since it's a day off, it's pretty, pretty lax. And I don't have a lot of like work things to do, but I do have some chores that I need to get done on that day. So I made sure to write those down and just plan for that. And then I wrote in that I needed to remember that I was going to the library branch on Thursday that I don't normally go to every day. So just to remind myself, I wrote it on a little banner and then kind of did some layering to, again, use, I feel like I'm a broken record. I just use up the stickers that I have so that they're not just sitting on the shelf somewhere and I... I'm wasting my time with them so I just put that down and then that is kind of what my dailies look like from here on out and then that's the last view of my weekly but thank you so much for watching I appreciate you have a great week bye <music>